You're listening to Central Time. I'm Rob Ferret. Think back to the last time you were watching a movie or TV show set in the past, and one of the characters made a phone call. Well, it's quite possible the phone they were using came from Wisconsin. That's because Galesville, Wisconsin, is home to what's most likely the world's largest collection of antique phones, something that got the attention of Hollywood producers as it grew over the last 50 years. Now its owners are looking to get out of the collecting business and find a new home for their probably hundreds of thousands of phones. Ron Knappen is the co-owner of PhoneCo, Inc. in Galesville, along with his wife, Mary. Ron, thanks for joining us. Yeah, you're welcome. How did you first uh, get started, you and Mary, get started collecting phones? Well, basically, and the roots go way back to where I was quite an accumulator (laughs) of antiques. And that goes back to when I was about eight or nine eight or nine years old, uh, hauling stuff in uh, at home from the dump. But starting in phones was actually uh, while I was still teaching school, and I I was moonlighting by being an actual true picker for other dealers. And um, I had a friend that would refinish old wooden wall phones very nicely and he'd sell them to me for 25 bucks a piece and then I would sell them for 30 and and I I went to see him one time when we were down in uh, near Galesburg, Illinois where he lived and I ended up buying uh, like all all the collectible phones I had the money for and then spent all our savings, which Mary thinks was around four hundred dollars, seemed like to me it was around two hundred and fifty bucks. And we hauled those phones home. Um, I, I I was a little nervous about wanting to get my money back, uh, and she was too because we had little kids and the bank payments uh, for a house, and uh, so an old house we had fixed up in Melrose, Wisconsin, and so I put an ad sent an ad off to the Antique Trader Weekly, um, came out on uh, January, I think it was the 6th, um, 1972, and uh, I realized a lot of results from that ad. I was dumbfounded. I was on the phone an hour every night for (laughs) a week, and um, and I, I knew where there were a lot of old phones. They had just been taking them out of, um, out of the houses, um, and and some of them were being destroyed. And there was a fellow in Wittenberg, Wisconsin. Ray Peterson ran the phone company. He had a lot of interesting stuff. He had the mouthpieces that screw into these old phones. That's a funnel shape. He had them different colors, like red and uh, green and porcelain and clear glass. And I bought all that stuff as much as I could financially and put in a an old station wagon. And um, then the collectors started repeating purchasing from us. And that's pretty much uh, kind of a general survey of how we were starting in on the business. After about a year of that, it got um, a little bit more than what I could handle part-time, so I made a choice to either quit that or quit teaching, and my natural instinct is is wheeling and dealing and, and being an adventuresome person into the past. That surveys it right there, adventure into the past, and I enjoy it very much. I really enjoyed going into attics of old houses and oh, fun. buying stuff in old stores and things like that years and, ago. And, Ron, I bet you got a crash course in phone history, right? You've uh, learned a lot about how phones have changed uh, over time. Well, I've done seven books. The last book I put together on this was 2,200 pages. It was the seventh book I put together on telephone history. Yeah, there's, and I enjoy it. I enjoy sharing this with other people. Yeah. What's the oldest phone you've had in your possession at some point? Well, I'm sure there is one out there that was would have been dated around 1878 or wow. 1880, but uh, it's hard to tell because they didn't date them, of course. And there are peculiarities to these things that you can help identify them. But um, um, by and large, I think 1892 is 
we still have a number of those hanging around, either a wall, a couple wall phones, the 1892 version, and uh, it, it could have been made in 1895. They stayed the same for a while. If I looked at one of these, would I would I know it was a phone? I mean, did it look like something we'd recognize as a phone today? Oh yes, yes. They're they're they've got a place to talk and they've got a place, the thing to listen over. So that that nails it down right there. We're talking to Ron Knappen. Uh, he's a collector of antique phones from Galesville, co-founder of Phone Co. Inc., which he manages with his wife, Mary. And you, I understand you and your team now uh, have, you don't just get these phones and sell them. You, in, in many cases, uh, refurbish them, get them as close to working condition as you can. Is that right? Well, that lately here, we've been straying away from that because it, the overhead is so high in running a business like this, so it's so labor-intensive, that we've avoided a few of those steps because a lot of people just want to hang them on the wall. They, they don't care if they work or not because they're using cell phones anyway. Who is, uh, who are, who's collecting these phones? What kind of people are out there getting these? Is it, uh, you know, I'm a collector, I've got like 50 phones, or is it, oh, I want that one phone I had when I was a kid? You've got them both. It's, it's a variety. But uh, collectors have uh, seemed like they've been diminished, not as many people coming in to that arena now to where they like to have one of each different type. Uh, that's been dropping off, and it's kind of sad. It's a gloom and doom thing. And, um, and, and, so, and there aren't many young people. Uh, it's the same way with polka dancing. You see fewer and fewer people, young people doing it. But then now there may be a kind of a new start on some of this stuff where there's just a few people. You'll see them in the antique malls young people now and then, uh, more lately than you did maybe about five years ago. It depends. There are certain people that want to collect one of each type, and for some reason there's a antique telephone in their memory, and they just, they end up having actually a small collection, or, or they just want one phone to remind them of their childhood when they used a princess phone or something like that. Now, you get calls, you've gotten calls over the years from Hollywood, you and Mary, to provide phones, right, for, for settings, for historical movies. What kind of things have you helped them out with? Um, Mary, could you answer this question about the movies? Um, which, what kind of phones did you help them out with? I'm going to ask Mary. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, we can put Mary on. I'm going to get on, do you? Yeah. Hi, Mary. Hi. Um, there's a variety of phones, um... We're just now sending a 500 set, which is a basic phone from the 70s, rotary phone to uh, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which is, I think, a TV, uh, sure. radio, I mean, a, a big TV show, yeah. TV show, yeah. And uh, so we, we send periodically to them. And then uh, a lot of the movies will require, like, your office phones, your call directors, and your multi-line phones. So we said, and I, I can't name off the movies because <laughs> I don't go to movie. I don't. I don't have time to go to movies and watch TV. So, but I know I. I always remember one of the, some of the first ones we sent phones to, and it was like uh, Eight Men Out and uh, uh, Fried Green Tomatoes. Oh. And some of those old ones I can remember those. <laughs> now, have you ever watched one of those movies and watched for your phones showing up? No, but whenever you see a movie. And you do see those phones. We say, "Well, we got that," or maybe we gave, them, we <laughs> sold them that, or you know. And I, uh, Ron mentioned earlier, starting with a station wagon. That uh, station wagon got a trailer later. Now what? You've got a warehouse full of phones. Yeah, yeah, we have several buildings full with phones. Oh, more than my, one building. In my trailers in our backyard, but uh, you know, people are still um, picking up phones. And needing parts, like for their wood wall phones, so they're ordering a lot of parts. Uh, we have people come to our shop that need parts, and, and um, or they're find, or they're digging them out of their attic. Like, oh, I know, I've got oh. that phone somewhere. So, oh, so they go dig it out, and they find out that the crank is missing or the mouthpiece is missing. Or something. So they're ordering parts like that. So, uh, and then there's people who are sending us phones to fix up, whether they're Bakelites or plastics or. What have you there? And, and sending up to a candlestick. 
And Mary, I have one more question. You can you can hand, uh, handle this one, or you can hand it off to Ron okay. if you want. Um, I understand you you and Ron are looking to get out of the phone business now. Yeah, are you at hoping our age, somebody? I think we should. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> are you hoping somebody uh, picks up the tradition of being the phone person from Wisconsin? Well, that would be a dream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, and we help him out a lot. Okay, Ron's waving his hand. He wants to okay, talk yeah. here. Thanks, Mary. You mentioned the inventory. Yeah. And it's quite fast. There's 29 semi-trailers in our backyard full of old telephones. They're jammed underneath them. They're in the pine tree out here in a pine row. Uh, There's actually five properties that we own in the area, and four of them have quite a few phones in them. I would say you you had semi-trailers. You wanted to haul them away. You'd take about 64 of them. I'm I'm taking them out of the 29 that are in the backyard here and six more on another property. So it's it's, uh, actually cumbersome, difficult to uh, manage, and um, if we walk away from it, we still have an overhead, which is difficult to keep up with with, on Social Security. Mm. And, uh, Ron, do you have a couple favorite phones, uh, you know, that are in your house that you just uh, you love and you have them up on display? Well, mostly there's there's two of uh, Ericsson wall phones that are 1892 versions out in the barn that I'd like to complete that I think those deserve a tremendous amount of regard. I have um, ha- I have turned down one of those one time. I think she ended up getting $1,600 for it. Um, I didn't feel I could afford it, and I kept these around thinking I'd fix them up but it never in the house here there's one walnut reproduction that i saved back because the grain was so pretty now that's about it and i think an eiffel tower phone deserves preserving here <laughs> especially them that are pretty ornately decorated yeah well i guess i better ask what are you talking to me on right now i'm ta- i'm talking to you on a user-friendly <laughs> <laughs> just a regular um probably um Oh, Panasonic. <laughs> yeah, they they never made phones very well for a while, but now they're pretty pretty good quality. They'll last a while. Ron, thanks a lot. Tell Mary thanks for me, and uh, good luck as you're trying to uh, sell off your collection. I thank you for calling, and I wish you well. Goodbye. Ron and Mary Knappen are the owners of Phone Co. Inc. in Galesville. They talked with us about their huge multi-decade collection of antique phones, which they're now looking to pass on to the right uh, owner or owners.